Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, we will solve a few problems today. Uh, problems about planes and lines, parallel, perpendicular, well, general solid geometry stuff. Uh, this lecture is part of the course of Advanced Mathematics for Teenagers, which is presented on unizor.com. Um, that's where I suggest you to watch this le lecture from, because it contains basically the conditions of these problems. Um, no solutions, just whatever the problem states. Um, and I do recommend you to try to solve these problems yourself before you listen, uh, listen to this lecture. Um, well, these problems are um, not difficult at all. Um, most of them are in basically like one or two logical statements and references to the previous problems or, or axioms. So um, they should not present much difficulties for you. And it's very important that you try to do it yourself. Even if you um, don't come up with a, with a, with a good solution, um, it's still important that you think about this. You're trying to make some logical connections between components of each problem um, and only then listen to whatever I'm suggesting as my solution, which obviously is not necessarily the only solution. You might come up with your own. And by the way, you're welcome to send me an email about your own solution. I will gladly include it into uh, the website with reference to you. All right, so problems. Um, so I have specified them in a short uh, hand uh, notation. So here they are. Problem first. You have two planes uh, parallel to each other. One plane and another plane. Now the problem states that the distance between these planes is constant. Now what is the distance between planes? Well, the distance from any point on this to this plane is basically the length of the perpendicular. And if you have another point and have its projection to this plane. It's supposed to be the same length of these perpendiculars. So we're talking about two randomly chosen points on the plane gamma, which is parallel to the plane delta. And we have two projections, which means two perpendiculars from the corresponding points to the plane um, delta, and I have to prove that the length of AB is equal to the length of A prime B prime. If points, uh, if planes gamma and delta are parallel. All right, so how can we prove that? Well, let's think about it. First of all, we have already proven before <coughs> that was one of the problems. Um, I think it was a previous lecture, actually, that two perpendiculars to the same plane are parallel to each other. Okay, so these are parallel to each other. Which means that they are in the same plane, right? Okay, now, since they are in the same plane, um, what we can do right now is <coughs> um, we can prove that this is a rectangle. Now, why is this a rectangle? Let's just think about it. Um, If we will draw a line from A parallel to BB prime in this plane, 
it must coincide with a a prime why well because let's say it's not a double prime or second a second so a a second within this plane is parallel to db prime okay now um since they are parallel then a a second b prime b is a uh, rectangle right because this is parallel to this this is parallel to this now these are right angles because a a b and a uh, prime b prime are perpendicular so it's a, a parallelogram with the right angle which means it's a rectangle and a a uh, second is equal to db prime all right so all i have to do right now is prove that a a second and a a prime are one and the same line <coughs> now first of all they do um lie in the same plane that's number one number two a a prime is parallel but a uh, a a uh, second is parallel by construction and a a prime <coughs> cannot intersect with bb prime in this plane i'm talking about a a prime b prime b plane so within that plane a a prime and bb prime cannot intersect because otherwise the planes would not be parallel right so if they are not intersect, a a prime is also parallel to bb prime. So a a second a, a, and a a prime are one and the same line, and therefore a a prime b prime b is a rectangle. So we can just wipe out this line. It coincides with this one. So if I draw a parallel from a parallel to bb prime it will completely within the plane a a prime b prime b it will completely um uh, coincide with a a prime all right that's it so it's a rectangle and since it's a rectangle a a, a b and a prime uh, b prime are equal in length which means that the distance between two parallel planes measured along the common perpendicular is always uh, constant. All right, that's it. Basically, all of these problems are on this level of difficulty. You just have to have maybe one extra construction or something like this. Next one. You have again two parallel planes. So it's number one. Gamma is parallel to delta. Gamma delta. Then you have a point A on plane gamma and a line A which contains uh, this plane, uh, this this point A. Also is known that line A parallel to delta so the planes are parallel and this line is parallel now what I have to prove is that this line a completely inside the plane gamma so basically what it says that if you have a point on a plane parallel to this um, plane any line which passes through this point parallel to this should be within this plane so so all lines parallel to the delta are supposed to be within this plane gamma they are horizontally uh, rotating around the point a but always within plane gamma so that that's the point of okay so how can we prove that uh, 
Actually, you know what? We can probably use the previous problem. Since planes are parallel, what I will do is the following. I will drop a perpendicular from A to B and I know it has a certain fixed length, right? Now, what I will do next is let's assume my um, line A uh, passes through point uh, capital A uh, on the plane gamma but it's intersecting gamma at certain angle, it's not within um, plane gamma and what I will do is within the plane gamma um, I will draw a, a, a line which is parallel to this plane now how can I draw it? there are many different lines, right? so what I will do is the following I will draw a plane through A and the perpendicular H so A is somewhere there and I assume uh, it, it intersects gamma at certain angle and there is a perpendicular H so if I will draw a plane through A and H it will intersect uh, my plane gamma at certain uh, line A prime okay so now A prime is parallel to uh, this plane delta um, why? because it's very easy because the same plane which I draw uh, which is going through A and H it intersects this plane delta at certain line B, right? so this same uh, plane so the A prime and B are within the same plane and they are not intersecting because the planes are parallel, right? right? so plane um, so the line A prime is parallel to B and therefore it's parallel to delta okay fine so I have my line A which is outside of the gamma by assumption right and line uh, A prime which is within plane gamma and they are all within the same uh, within the same plane but now look at it this way um, if my two lines A and A prime both are parallel to delta now A is not intersecting with B otherwise A would not be parallel to delta, right? and A prime is not intersecting to B and everything is occurring within the same plane which is uh, the plane formed by line A and, and uh, altitude H because A prime is intersection of this plane with gamma and B is intersection of the same plane with delta so it looks like within the same plane I have line B and two lines A prime and A parallel to B now and both are actually going through the same point A now from the plane geometry we know that this is uh, impossible to have two different lines parallel to this one which is passing through the same point right so A and A prime must coincide so our assumption that A is outside of the plane gamma um, uh, is, is just wrong it must be inside so A and A prime are supposed to be the same lines so again the key to this problem is to draw a plane through this line and H which is just uh, a projection from A to from point A to, 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 to delta and that gives me two lines and the parallelism is obvious okay fine
Number three. I have a. I have two intersecting planes. I have two intersecting planes. Let me try to this to draw it this way. This is one, and this is another. Gamma, delta, C is uh, the edge of this. Um, dihedral angle, if you wish. Now, we have two lines. Now, within uh, gamma, we have line A. Parallel to delta. No, sorry, it's not parallel to delta. We have line B, which belongs to delta, and these two lines are parallel to, it, to, to each other. That's what happens. So, the planes are at the angle to each other, but the lines are parallel. Now, my statement is that in this case, both, line, uh, both lines, A and B, must be parallel to the intersection between these two planes. Okay, here's how we can solve it. Um, if A is parallel to B, then A is parallel to entire delta. Right? So, A is parallel to delta. Now, if B is parallel to gamma, uh, sorry, to A, then B is parallel to gamma. Because if the line parallel another line on the plane, that's enough to, uh, to say that the line is parallel to an entire plane. Okay. Now, now look at it this way. We have a plane delta. We have a line which is parallel to this plane. And we have another plane, gamma, which goes through A and intersects delta. Now, there was a theorem that if you have, let me just draw it differently so you would recognize it better. So if you have a line, uh, in this case A, parallel to delta, and you have a plane which intersects uh, delta and goes through A, then the line of intersection, by the way, this is gamma, like gamma, then the line of intersection, which in this case C, is parallel to the line itself. So from this, we know that A is parallel to C. Now, symmetrically, we have a line B, which is parallel to uh, plane gamma, and we have a, a cutting, uh, intersecting plane delta going through the B. And the theorem stated that the line of intersection, which is C actually, would be parallel to B. So similarly, B is parallel to C. So all you have to do right now is to consider this problem as a continuation, basically, or a very, very, um, very close relative to um, to the problem to, to the theorem which which has been proven before that if you have a parallel line to a plane and then the plane which intersects this plane passing through this line then the intersection will be parallel to the line same thing we just applied it twice for two different cases and we have two different parallelism between a to c and b to c separately okay done that Next. Next.
So we have a plane gamma. We have line A within it. Now we have a line B which is not part of gamma but it is parallel to A. Okay. Now we have some plane which goes through B and intersects plane delta which intersects uh, gamma at line C. So what I have to prove is that A is parallel to C. So C is gamma intersect delta. All right, so it's absolutely similar consideration as in the previous case, right? You have this line parallel to the plane and then we have a plane which goes through this line and intersects the gamma at, at C. So, B is parallel to C from that theorem which I was referring to in the previous problem. But, A is parallel to B. That's the condition of our problem. So, there is a transitivity here. A is parallel to B, B is parallel to C, and from this we follow that A parallel to C. And again, I can refer to another uh, problem which we have solved before. If two lines separately are parallel to the third line, then they are parallel to each other. We did it before in one of the lectures. That's quite interesting, actually, that in mathematics, if you have proven something, you can use it um, to basically shorten the whole proof for, for, the, for the next problem. That's what I just did. I immediately referred to some uh, theorem and the problem which we have already solved. And that's sufficient as a proof, obviously. Okay, next. That was fast. Okay, now. We have two skew lines, A and B, which means they are not intersecting and they are not parallel to each other. Okay, uh, I will probably have to draw it slightly differently. Let me start from the planes these two lines belong to. So there is a plane gamma which belong which A belongs to. And then there is a plane delta and B belongs to. So I draw these, line, uh, these planes parallel to each other because that's what I'm going to prove actually, that they are parallel. But the condition is, so A is parallel to delta, A is parallel to delta, and B is parallel to gamma. B is parallel to gamma. And by themselves, A and B are basically completely random, so they can be skewed not parallel, not, not obviously not intersecting, according to this drawing, at least. So, what I would like to prove is that gamma and delta are parallel lines. So, if one line on one plane is parallel to another plane, and, uh, um, uh, and the line on that other plane is parallel to the first plane, then the planes must be, separ uh, must, must be parallel. 
this is actually quite interesting. I mean, you might not really expect this type of thing. This is one of the more interesting problems, which I would say. All right, so what can we do about this? Here is what I suggest. Let's just take a point on B and draw a line parallel to A. A prime. And take a point here and draw a line parallel to B. B prime. Now, these lines are um, parallel and these lines are parallel to each other. Now, my point right now is to prove that um, the line B is completely within line A prime is completely within delta and line B prime is completely within gamma. How can I prove that? Well, let me do it this way. I'm not taking any point here. What I will do is I will project line A onto the plane gamma, uh, delta, sorry, delta. So it means that these are perpendiculars. So from each point on line A, I draw a perpendicular down to B, basically forming a projection of the line A onto plane delta. Now, projection of a line is a line. We were talking about this before. That's number one. Number two, um, all these perpendiculars <coughs> are, are, are parallel to each other. So it's basically they form a, a, a plane, if you wish, which, which cuts across. So um, A and A prime are parallel to each other. Why? Because A prime belongs to this plane delta. A belongs to plane gamma, and I know that A is parallel to delta, which means it, it cannot uh, intersect. So if A prime and A are not parallel while lying in the same plane, I would have that uh, uh, line A intersects somewhere plane delta, which is impossible since it's parallel. Now, similarly, it's not just any B prime, which is parallel to B. I will project my B onto plane gamma, getting the line B prime. And again, it's supposed to be parallel to this one because B is parallel to the plane gamma. And the line and its projection are lying in the same plane, so um, the parallelism is obvious, uh, they cannot intersect because otherwise B would intersect gamma. So, what I have done right now, I have proven that line A prime, which lies within delta, because it's a projection of A onto delta, and line B, which is also, that's the, that, that's the condition of the uh, of the problem, it lies in, with, within delta. They form some angle. And these lines also, both lying within gamma, they also form an angle. And sides of these two angles are parallel to each other. And as we know, again, there was a theorem before that for parallelism of two planes, it's sufficient to have some, ang uh, some, some two lines at angle to each other, any angle as long as they're not parallel, uh, to be correspondingly parallel to uh, the lines on, on another plane. So that's the uh, major um, theorem about parallel uh, planes. So it's sufficient to have two lines on one 
correspondingly parallel to two lines on another, as long as the lines are intersecting. That's sufficient to have planes parallel to each other. That was one of the theorems. Okay, so that's the proof of the parallelism. Next. <coughs> Next. So we have uh, a plane gamma we have a line B which is perpendicular to plane gamma and then we have line A which is perpendicular to B to line B now I did not draw it this way uh, obviously I could because this line A can be anywhere within this within this plane which is parallel to gamma so basically I have to prove that line A is parallel to gamma given that A is perpendicular to B and B is perpendicular to gamma All right, so what should we do in this case? Well, what we can do is, and it's actually similar to whatever we have done in, in one of the previous problems, we will uh, construct a plane defined by A and B. It will be just a cutting plane through this is the plane okay now let's put some points here A, B, C and D so B is just any point on A and C becomes its projection it's perpendicular to gamma. So everything occurs within A, B, C, D plane. So what do I know about this? Now I know that these two are parallel. Now, this angle is 90 degrees because B is perpendicular to gamma and therefore it's perpendicular to C. And this is also 90 degree because I just dropped the perpendicular within this plane I dropped the perpendicular to CD uh, what else this is also right angle so we have basically a, a parallelogram here obviously because all angles are um, at least three angles are 90 degrees, right? So that's what that, that's why the fourth angle is also 90 degrees. So this one is 90 degree because that's how A was uh, defined relative to B. This is 90 degree because uh, this is perpendicular to the plane. Um, and these two are parallel to each other because I dropped a perpendicular from B within this plane onto the line CD. So it's a parallelogram. And from this being parallelogram follows that AB is parallel to CD, which means A is parallel to one line on the plane gamma, which means it's parallel to the entire plane gamma. All right. These are all the problems. And what I suggest you to do right now is try to go through the same problems again on unisor.com and, uh, and solve them again. That would be a good exercise to basically firmly put it into your mind. Uh, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.